we made it. We're halfway across Australia. Woo! That's right. Jackie and I had now landed in the town of Kimba, home to the Big Galah. So I guess you could say there were two Big Galahs here now. After seven glorious days, we left Port Lincoln and its lack of great white sharks, although I was hatching a plan to allow Jackie and I to dive with them, but more on that later. We were on a bit of a mission because in a couple of days, we would be flying back to Sydney. Kimber, which was only 200 kilometres from Port Lincoln, was the halfway mark from where we'd be storing our caravan for two weeks because Jackie and I had a wedding, birthdays, and I was doing a motorcycle ride. We'd also be catching up with our youngest Ram Van Man fan ever. Here we are in Kimber, and I just love this community art project. Oh, it's so good. Our accommodation for the night would be at the Kimber Pioneer Memorial. The perfect place for a stopover, and all you have to do is pay a donation. And once Jackie and I set up camp, we were just in time to watch some awesome horsemanship. Here we are in Kimber, watching the show jumping championship. We struck up a conversation with the lady who organises these events and she explained that the competitors train their horses up to win these competitions so they can then sell their horses for big money. We then checked out the Edward John Eyre sculptures. Erected in November 2011, these stunning figures are an artistic tribute to Edward John Eyre and the indigenous men on whose bush skills he so often relied on. <laughs> The following day we were off like prawns in the sun, hurtling towards familiar territory. Today we would have a 180 kilometer trek before reaching Port Augusta. Once we hit Port Augusta it was only a half hour drive to our destination, the beautiful Spear Creek. This is where we were leaving our caravan for the two weeks whilst we were away. We packed our bags ready for a two week infiltration of New South Wales and the following day we left bright and early, pointing our ram in the direction of Adelaide. And the first town we stopped in to give our legs a good old stretch was Snowtown. It's approximately 140 kilometres north of Adelaide. Known for the Snowtown murders or bodies in barrels murders, most of the bodies were found in barrels in an abandoned bank vault. <laughs> and when Jackie and I were leaving Snowtown, imagine my surprise when we saw people loading barrels onto a trailer. What's in the barrels? Jackie and I spent the night in Adelaide catching up with our mates Kathy and Steve, and the next day we were at the airport boarding a plane for New South Wales where we spent two frantic weeks getting stuff done. Things that included family birthdays. Happy birthday, Mum and Robbie Rob. I got to jump on my motorcycle after a year off and enjoy a three-day ride with the boys. And Jackie and I joined family and friends to celebrate Emily and Rob's special day. And this is where I got to meet my youngest Ram Van Man fan ever. I'm here with my youngest Ram Van Man fan. It's a little Alby. He's going to be travelling with us in two years. <laughs> got to grow up a little bit more. What do you reckon, Alby? <laughs> and cut. <laughs> this is how I treat all my Ram Van Man fans. Just like that, after two weeks, we found ourselves back in good old South Australia, in the Butte town of Butte. We've been away for two whole weeks, weddings, birthdays, motorcycle rides, and now we are back in South Australia and heading back to Spear Creek, and on the way we will be visiting Shucker the Shark. And after Jackie and I met up with Shucker the Shark, we were booked in to do a virtual reality shark cage dive. If we couldn't dive with great white sharks in Port Lincoln, we'd do it here in good old Port Pirie, home to the iconic Shuck of the Shark, a 5.5 metre life-size replica 
of a female great white shark who became entangled in a snapper line and drowned in Germain Bay. And the autopsy of this shark was filmed for National Geographic and attended by Jaws author Peter Benchley and Australian shark attack victim Rodney Fox. Then it was time for Jackie and I to jump in the cage. Yeah. How does that feel? <laughs> yep, that feels good. <laughs> yeah. Have you got your wetsuit on, love? No. <laughs> good luck. Jackie and I enjoyed our VR experience as we watched a great white shark tear our cage apart. Fortunately for us, no limbs were lost. Once we were back on the beautiful Spear Creek Sheep Station, we settled in. This time around, we explored by bike, and the folks here at Spear Creek put on a fantastic pizza night with a live band, just to celebrate our return. Jackie and I thoroughly enjoyed the covers and original songs by the band Station Blues. They were absolutely fantastic. And this really is the best way to party when you're out in the bush. Now the last time Jackie and I were here camped at beautiful Spear Creek, we didn't really get a chance to check out Port Augusta. So now we took the opportunity to do just that. And the first place we visited was the Australian Arid Lands Botanic Garden. The perfect place for an early morning walk and a relaxing breakfast in the Blue Bush Cafe. We explored the gardens on one of four specially marked walking tracks after our Red Cliff walk where we enjoyed spectacular views of the Spencer Gulf and Flinders Ranges. And talking about the Flinders Ranges, will we be hitting them soon? So we were compiling a huge list of food to buy because Jackie and I would certainly need to be stocking up before we left Spear Creek. This morning we've left the farm and we are hurtling towards the information centre to spend a few hours in the belly of the snake. <laughs> Welcome to the Woodladder Outback Centre. This tourist attraction is part of the information centre. This is where Jackie and I were amazed to enter Woodladder's award-winning Tunnel of Time. The only interactive, interpretive centre for the Flinders Ranges and Outback region. And I'll tell you what, it's larger than you would think. We spent hours in here, creeping through the giant jaws of Max, the prehistoric ripper lizard, and transported back to the creation of the Flinders Ranges and the Outback. Jackie and I learned what the land means to its traditional owners, and we followed in the footsteps of our early explorers. Then we heard the tales of the settlers in the large Outback Theatre. And Jackie even got in some exercise. <laughs> the Woodladder Outback Centre's Tunnel of Time is well worth the visit, and you will be amazed. Jackie and I had a wonderful time checking out Port Augusta and once we had a month's supply of tucker tucked away in our van, it was time to leave. And our destination today would be the town of Quorn. Now we really were hitting the Flinders Ranges. <laughs> our drive today would be 30 kilometres, the perfect distance for Jackie and I. So after arriving back in Adelaide and spending a week on the beautiful Spear Creek property, where Jackie and I really familiarised ourselves with Port Augusta, did more exploring on the property and caught up with quite a few fellow campers, we now felt like we were entering the next chapter of our travels. Now we could explore the contrasting beauty of South Australia's iconic outback including the tiny towns, rich history, local characters and unique attractions that make up the Flinders Ranges. 
We're on our way, we're on our way to Quad today. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> yes, we're traveling the huge 30 kilometer distance from Spear Creek Holiday Park to Quorn. Looking forward to arriving somewhere new. Yes, indeed. Jackie and I were about to experience Quorn and immerse ourselves in its history. Taste the flavours of Quorn, including the Flinders Gin Distillery. Invigorate our senses in the great outdoors and remember days gone by. There was a lot to do in Quorn, and Jack and I were chomping at the bit to do it all. And once we booked ourselves in and set up camp, the first place we visited was, of course, the Gin Distillery. This is where I got to taste test the Farrier's Gin, Kwandong Gin, Outback Lemon and Lime Gin, and Butterfly Pea Flower Gin. First gin and tonic, and it's the Farrier's and it's quite, quite a nice taste, and Jackie loves it. So this is the first time I've tasted gin. I've never had gin before. And um, this is the Farrier's Gin. It's got a warm, spicy aroma, and it's really delicious. I'm loving it. What's it like? That's quite nice as well. Is it? Yeah. Jackie and I drank the afternoon away. Comes out to my last gin. <laughs> this is the sweet one. <laughs> Once I sobered up, it was time for Jackie and I to immerse ourselves in Quorn's history as we took a self guided stroll around the magnificent old buildings and learn more about the town. For example, it's been the backdrop for many Australian films, including Sunday Too Far Away, The Shirley, Gallipoli, and The Water Diviner. With two pubs and, of course, the gin distillery, numerous cafes, butchers, and an IGA, well, we could settle in and make this our home for the next week or so. Beautiful Quorn, home to the Pitchy Ritchie Railway, where Jackie and I were keen to travel the Garn's original route through the stunning Pitchy Ritchie Pass, which has been authentically restored and operated by volunteers. In the late 1950s, the Pitchy Ritchie Railway was abandoned and was almost pulled up in the early 1970s. Thankfully, a group of volunteers formed the Pitchy Ritchie Railway Preservation Society in July 1973, saving the line. Of course, Jackie and I were super keen to take a ride on this historic railway, so you can imagine our disappointment when we were told it wasn't running at the moment. Not to worry though, because there's always more than one way to skin a cat, but more on that later. Now we were checking out some of Quorn's wonderful wildlife. Hello little fella. Want some bush tucker? Hey? They're a bit shy. Asado, after a visit to Port Augusta, we are heading out to Warren Gorge in search of the yellow-footed wallaby. <laughs> and maybe we'll see a thorny devil. I really want to see a thorny devil. Warren Gorge provides an excellent example of the many varying microclimates that exist in pockets throughout the Flinders Ranges due to the slight changes in geology, environment and topography. In the gullies and gorges, there are some small caves and hidey holes that the animals use for protection from extreme weather and predators. These spots also have little springs and puddles that are often a lifeline to the animals during the intense summer. This is where you may be fortunate enough to see yellow-footed rock wallabies drinking from the pools of water, which whilst endangered and generally rare, are iconic to the Flinders Rangers. Unfortunately for Jackie and I, the rock wallabies were proving to be just like the great white sharks over in Port Lincoln. Non-existent. 
Today, Jackie and I were exploring by car, taking in the history on the outskirts of Quorn. History like Hugh Proby, Squire of Kenyaka, an Earl's son who took up the pastoral lease of Kenyaka on the 1st of July 1851 as a rental. Here we are at Proby's grave. His ancestral home was Elton Hall in Derbyshire in England. Hugh Proby's father was Admiral Granville Leifson Proby, a sailor with a distinguished naval career, having fought with Lord Nelson. While attempting to cross a creek, poor Huey was swept from his horse and drowned. Six years after his death, his family had a tablet made of Scottish granite and shipped it to Australia from his homeland. It was hauled to its current site by a Bullock team from Port Augusta. As Jackie and I travelled on the Flinders Rangers self-drive loop, it took us on a journey back in time. With loads of scenic locations and historic points of interest, it's definitely a must-see when visiting beautiful Quorn. And the country out here is absolutely stunning. Next stop for Jackie and I was the Simonston Ruins which provide a picturesque backdrop of the Flinders Ranges. Simonston was a former town in South Australia which was abandoned before completion in the early 1880s. The town was originally intended to be on the new railway extending north from Quorn, but the final route passed through Gordon instead. The town that never was. So, one building was a hotel, the other building was a general store. The landscape out here is absolutely glorious. It's majestic. Ooh, colours. Now I really want to see a thorny devil, the lizard, the thorny devil because I want to do a painting of one. I'm not sure if they live in the region, but I think they do. Second building, or what's left of it, of the town, never was. Well, we were thoroughly enjoying ourselves in beautiful Quorn. We had explored her town and beautiful surrounds. And of course, we had enjoyed the Quorn Silo light show which is a free spectacular night attraction. So make sure you pack a couple of chairs, a bottle of wine and some cheese and bickies, just like Jackie and I did. We're on our way up to Devil's Peak, where we might cop a peak of the elusive yellow-footed rock wallaby. <laughs> Devil's Peak is 697 metres above sea level and formed of pound quartzite approximately 700 million years old. When looking at the peak from Quorn, it was said to look like the face of the devil lying back looking towards the heavens. The walk is 1.3 kilometres long and will take approximately two hours to complete. With some very steep and rocky parts that require walkers to climb over, it is definitely not for the faint of heart. Well, it's pretty much all straight uphill. Poor Jackie. She's just trying to keep her knee from hurting too much. We're almost at the top. We've got to go around the back of Devil's Peak there and we'll come up onto the top. So far this walk was proving to be absolutely spectacular. Unfortunately, due to a past motorcycle accident, Jackie's knee would soon be too painful to continue. <laughs> We're almost there. Jackie was a real trooper today, but it was around here that she needed to stop. As for me, I would continue climbing. And as I climb this 700 million year old rock in my trusty thongs, I couldn't help but think of how much fun I was having and how awesome this landscape looked. Little did I know, it was about to get even better.
The top of Devil's Peak sits at an extreme angle. And I'm not afraid of heights, but I was a little concerned that if I tripped on my thongs, I could easily go tumbling over the edge. <laughs> As for the views, my fellow adventurers, they were absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. And this was a walk that I'll never forget. Holy shit! <laughs> what a view! And what a way to start our exploration of the Flinders Ranges. And Quorn was just the beginning, because Jackie and I were planning to visit places like Eager Water, Blinman, Parachilna, Ark Ruler, Woolpena Pound, Rawnsley Station, and more. And I'll tell you what, I couldn't wait, because Jackie and I were supposed to be here in August last year. But because we travel at a snail's pace, it became too hot. Not to worry though, because in the end, we finally arrived here, and we are now ready to do some epic exploring. So I guess it's that time, my fellow adventurers, to give Quorn and our past month of travels a score. <laughs> well, it's been a frantic month with weddings, birthdays, and motorcycle riding, but finally we hit the Flinders Ranges, and I absolutely love Quorn. One of the highlights was the Devil's Peak Walk. And I was going to give Quorn a 4.5 out of 5, but I'm adding an extra half point for Little Albie. So 5 out of 5 for this past month. I've loved it. And yes, I'm giving it a score of 5 as well. Like Wayne said, we have been really busy. We've had a fantastic time catching up with our family in New South Wales and meeting little Albie, who's just so cute. Hi, Albie. So we're now looking forward to heading further into the Flinders Ranges and doing some wonderful exploring. So until next time, stay safe and happy travels, everyone. See ya. Bye. Bye.